talking about uh, mid-range water reducers today. Our top question that we've had over the last month is, where the heck do they go? Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. John Belkowitz here, Intelligent Concrete. We're going over our Q&A day today. What happened to the mid-range water reducer? Bum, bum, bum! We're going to go over three objectives today. What do we do from here? What is the next step when something that we've relied on for decades is all but gone? First, defining what this mid-range water reducer is and why everybody liked it. After that, we're going to look at why did it disappear overnight. And then the next question, the payback, is what do we do from here? What is the next step when something that we've relied on for decades is all but gone? What are we talking about today? I mean, what is this mid-range water reducer and why does everybody care? So the American Concrete Institute defines a water reducing admixture as an admixture that either increases slump or freshly mixed mortar or concrete without increasing water content or maintains slump with reduced amount of water. The effect being due to factors other than air entrainment. And of course, that is this water reducing admixture. And why it's so important? Is it because we like the color of it? No. Is it because it made concrete taste any differently? Of course not. It made concrete not only easier to manage, but it also made it stronger and last longer for a specific type of construction practice. Now, that technology was governed by ASTMC 494. Specifically, your type A, D, and E water reducing admixtures. When we look at this mid range water reducer and compare it to the mid range water reducers of the 1980s, the 1970s, a little bit different. This water reducer wasn't a naphthalene, wasn't a lignin, it was a very specific type of chemistry that we used to break down the agglomerates of cement surrounding water, and it did so by using this polycarboxylate comb polymer. Now, I'm not talking about the chemistry, I'm talking about the structure, where we see this backbone that has certain teeth attached to it. Now, these are the teeth we're gonna show right now. There's some other teeth on the other side of this that we'll talk about here in a second, but this is the general concept that we have this chemical structure that the backside of it, not the cone, but the backbone of it, wants to adsorb to a cement particle surface. And then the adjacent side, those blue teeth, the comb, if you will, the teeth to the comb, they're going to create something called steric repulsion where they're going to push adjacent teeth away. And of course, because it's attached to the cement particle, it's going to create that deflocculation of our cement particle and water. Now, the science of it is, and why it was so nice, where lignins and naphthalenes operated off of the electronegative potential of the cement solution. Here, it doesn't do that. It's more of a mechanical, not a chemical action. And we see that bonding, that adsorption of the polycarboxylate onto the cement particle surface. And in doing so, when we have that steric repulsion from adjacent teeth, It'll break that cement particle up and, of course, create that deflocculation and that creamy and dreamy feeling that we absolutely love with concrete. Very important. Item number two. Why did it disappear overnight? The reason why we put this video together is uh, we got a number of phone calls. And it wasn't just continental United States. It was one night. It was a Sunday night. Around 9 p.m., uh, got a phone call from somebody over the Big Blue Pond that a certain mid-range water reducer that they were getting disappeared. And man, it was such a strange conversation. And Whitney, you know, normally that's the time that we go to bed. We go to bed asleep uh, early, very, very early. So to get a call that late was out of the norm. And uh, the very next day, uh, I've got two phone calls from two different concrete providers that they were just told that their mid-range water reducer that they were so used to, it was like three different companies at this point, three different chemical companies, three weeks they were going to run out of supply. Um, 
That was Monday. By Wednesday, I think we had had our ninth or tenth phone call, Wednesday afternoon. And that's when we started asking questions. Why is it that there is a specific class of water reducers that all of a sudden are disappearing? And um, we, we got conflicting stories. And I, I'd like to you know <laughs> summarize it as best as I can without mentioning any of our you know, folks who give us that information, but ultimately a raw material that was being used to create this mid-range water reducer was created in a very specific part of the world. Uh, a large percentage of that raw material was created in this part of the world. Well, because of certain sh shipping restrictions and because of change in practices and the availability of materials, that raw material that the concrete chemical providers throughout the world were no longer going to provide a specific type of mid-range water reducer. And I don't care what the name was uh, from the different chemical companies. What color was it? Red, purple, green, blue? It doesn't matter. For this specific water reducer, they all used the same raw chemical from the same place in the world. And now it's gone. Now that we know that, what's the takeaway? What's the, what's the payoff? What do we do from here? And that's part three. So what do we do from here is the most important question. And I hope the answer brings you some value. And it's not the easiest answer because it does require work on your part. And when I say you... I feel like I'm referring to either the concrete batch plant operator, the owner of the concrete batch plant, uh, and the architect, the engineer, who has some design of the concrete. So there are three things. All of them require you to do either some information gathering or work with your technical representative from the chemical company that you normally use. But the first thing is work with that technical representative. So working with that chemical provider, you're going to get their best effort. Of course, they want to keep you as a, a client, but they're going to give you their best effort to a replacement. Not only is it going to be in a bottle, but it might be in multiple bottles. But bear in mind, they're dealing with the problem just like you are. They no longer have a product to sell. The unfortunate reality is they have other products to sell, some of which in combination might be able to come close. But again, that's up to them and what you have existing in your plant. So the first thing is working with them. The second thing is hiring a company like us. You know, you already have a number of technologies in your concrete plant. You know, I sometimes um, compare a concrete plant to the admixture system. So you know those Wunderbar things and bars? You know what I'm talking about? The analogy that I like to use for the admixture system in a concrete batch plant is, is similar to that Wunderbar system that you see in back of bars. So instead of having a Coca-Cola dispenser uh, behind bars, what you normally have is a gun. And the gun is has a main line that's attached to soda water, and then it has six additional lines that are attached to the different syrups. So you don't have to go to a dispenser. The dispenser is the gun. In one gun, you have six different sodas. So it's the same thing with the concrete admixture systems. Normally now, uh, we have a Connex or a shipping container that's brought in with a majority of the chemicals and the distribution system, and there's somewhere around four to six chemicals in there. And then we have a lovely picture here, patchouli add that picture, of a chemical admixture system that shows I think it's five different bottles. You'll see the picture right now. I'm not seeing it, but I think it's five, let's just say four to six different bottles. And each one of these bottles is a chemical admixture. So working with the technical representative or working with us to use what you already have in house, that's items number one and two of things that you can do. And of course, the third thing is work in-house with your own team to figure out how you're going to get that replacement. And you know, just off the cuff, not knowing what's in your plant right now, if you were using four to six fluid ounces per hundred weight 
of these mid-range water reducers that had the polycarboxylic comb polymers, I would use, again, not knowing what you have in your plant, go to the more concentrate version. Go to the, the polycarboxylate ether or the super plasticizers, as you would call them, the high-range water reducers. Instead of using them at 5 ounces per hundred weight, I would use them at somewhere between 2.5 to 3.5 ounces per hundred weight. And then, of course, to get that slump retention, what you can also use is a hydration retard or a hydration stabilizer or a set retarder anywhere between 0.75 and 1.5 fluid ounces per hundred weight. Now, you might have to bump up your water just a little bit, um, but as it stands right now, most of the mixes in the United States are starving for water anyway. So, thanks for joining us today. Had a good time with that. A lot of information. Let us know if you got any questions, and if you have. If you need a little bit of help, shoot us a message. We'll try to help as best as we can. We know everybody's going through a rough time with this. So uh, have fun. You know, this is when we get to figure out new things. I mean, despite the fact that one of the materials that we've relied on for decades or a decade and a half is uh, like smoke, um, you know, this is an opportunity for us to learn about new technologies that we already had existing or are coming out now to solve a major problem. So good luck. And um, yeah, like and subscribe. Have a great day, y'all.